guys, welcome to our channel, Anything Medicine. So today we are discussing the adenovirus family, and actually this family have one virus, which is adenovirus. And this virus have a unique shape, let's discuss that. It have, uh, as all viruses shape, uh, a cosahedral shape, but uh, the unique, is, the unique in, th in, this, in its structure that it have antenna. Okay, the only virus which have antenna is adenovirus. And the function of antenna, this antenna function by make hemagglutination with blood and make the toxicity of the virus. So the manifestations uh, resulted by this virus is due to this antenna. And it divides the virus into several serotypes. Actually, we have 50, around 50 serotypes. Okay, and each serotype is divided from A to F, A, B, C, G, till F, okay? Then, let's see the virus have tendency to infect which cells? It tends to infect the epithelial cells actually, the epithelial lining of I, of GIT, of, your, of uh, uh, genital urinary system. Um, so, it has tendency to infect the epithelial cells or lining, okay? But the, uh, the latency here will be in the lymphoid tissues. So that's why they call this virus adenovirus, because adeno means lymph. So it has tendency to spend the latency in lymphoid tissues and uh, unlike the herpes family which we discussed uh, in the past that uh, this virus have no reactivation of that after the latency why the herpes uh, viruses were reactivated many times due to stress but this virus once it uh, lies dormantly or uh, in latent period it will not be reactivated. So that's why after when it lie in the lymphoid tissue, there will be no reactivation, but you may get the disease again if you expose to that virus again. And the pathogenic cycle will repeat it again till the latency, and that's it. So, it has tendency to infect the epithelium, it has propensity, propensity to make the latent period in lymphoid tissues, and how can we acquire this virus? Actually, we acquire this virus during childhood period. Actually, uh, most of us, all, all of us have at least now antibody against one of these serotypes. At least one. Because this virus is ubiquitous actually, and mostly we all acquire this virus, at least one serotype. Okay, so the, the ways of infection, how can we get this virus for adults? specifically due to sex and for all uh, ages uh, we, can, we can get it by contact especially for eye if you contact with water uh, polluted contaminated water uh, or, or through air droplets or orally by mouth so this virus then manifested into several forms due to uh, infected organ. If we get it through respiratory, we will have respiratory manifestations. If we get it uh, through mouth or orally, we will we'll have GIT manifestations. And same, if during sex we get this virus, we will have the genital urinary manifestations. And if we have uh, immunocompromised patient, this virus can disseminate into multiple organs. Let's see. So respiratory manifestations, first of all, and the prominent manifestation is common cold. And we know that mostly common cold caused by rhinovirus. But part of common cold caused by this virus, adenovirus, yes? So, and it can cause acute febrile pharyngitis. This virus, due to toxicity of the antenna, can cause fever, and not all viruses can cause fever. Pay attention to that. 
and it can cause bronchitis. We started from the upper uh, respiratory and we are going down, down. And it can cause also lower respiratory tract infection like pneumonia. And here the unique in this pneumonia, which caused by adenovirus, that it have it has pneumonia like pertosis symptoms. It has pneumonia like pertosis symptoms. So the child will be uh, will be uh, will be coughing uh, and the cough sound like whooping cough. Next, I if you good if you get the virus through contact with water or eye or hand by hands so the virus can get into our conjunctiva and, and hence it will make keratoconjunctivitis and if this contact will be recurrent it may lead finally to opacity of cornea and especially in animals so in, in first in primary contact in primary contact the cornea will look like pink or red but mostly in human it will not be much recurrent but in animal due to multiple recurrent infection you will see blue eye blue eye due to obesity absolutely blue eye you can see this so in GIT the virus can cause enteritis and diarrhea it causes actually the it's actually the second common cause of diarrhea after rotavirus so it's the second common cause of diarrhea second common cause of diarrhea after rotavirus rotavirus is the is the first Rota virus. Yes, a rota virus have the first is the, is the common cause, is the first common cause of diarrhea. Then it can cause mesenteric lymphadenitis and this can be confused by the surgeries, by the surgeon that it they can diagnose it like um, a cancer of abdomen because they will palpate a masses in the abdomen. So it's important for a pediatric surgeon. And it can cause also intussusception since it can lead to prolapse of the um, uh, gastrointestinal tract through the anus. And also it can be confused since they will think also that it is a cancer. Then in genital urinary uh, system, as I said, by sex, and mostly here it, it acquired uh, in 15 years old uh, teenagers and it can cause acute hemorrhagic cystitis remember there's a drug which causes acute hemorrhagic cystitis which is cyclophosphamide cyclophosphamide is an anti-cancer that causes these symptoms also acute hemorrhagic cystitis and by the way which other viruses that infect the eye. Also, measles infect the conjunctiva. Be careful. Measles, we have to differentiate in, in that case because measles also cause respiratory symptoms and which, which are combined by conjunctivitis. So, we have to differentiate between measles and adenovirus in this case. Then, it can cause also urethritis in male. And in female, it can cause cervicitis. Then, in disseminating, in, in, in immunocompromised patient, it can cause disseminating infection, meaning that it will infect, it will, it will make adenohepatitis, adenocarditis, adenoencephalitis. And we can diagnose this virus by heme agglutination inhibition test. Okay, mean that if we suspect that patient have adenovirus, we will take his own serum and we will we will mix it with the virus that we have it uh, in laboratory. And if the patient is have is if the patient having the antibodies against this virus, 
then there will be formation of immune complex, yes? And then we will bring the RBCs that normally should, uh, which normally should make agglutination with that uh, serum of patient, but here in this case will not be agglutination. So that's why it's called hemagglutination inhibition test. I mentioned because many of us forget this test or don't know. So neutralization test or uh, ELISA test and we took the specimen from stool mostly because we can see this virus shedding with stool. Then that prevention, there's actually there's no treatment, there's no efficient treatment for this virus. Again, uh, and we, we just can, and we have actually the vaccine against the virus, but since I say that there are 15 serotypes, we can't give each one the, the 15 vaccines. But we, can, we, we, we give usually the vaccines to military populations. And not all the 15 types of vaccines against the 15 types of virus. Uh, we will, we will, we'll, it's due to uh, the virus that is mostly common in that area. So, for example, the 14 uh, serotype, the 14th uh, serotype vi virus is, is common there. We will give immunization for the military population against this virus. So, thank you.